It's the morning show with EVH. I'm Eric Von Hessler. That is Autumn Fisher. Hello. And that is the president and CEO of Show Business Incorporated, Michael Albanese. Every morning I forget to tell you that I don't want you to say that anymore. Why? Because <laughs> it's annoying. Why is it annoying? Because <laughs> it just sounds so stupid. <laughs> I'm so far from, unless you're doing it completely, and you usually say it exaggeratively. Right. Every time. Why don't you get my why don't you get my sense of humor, Michael? I, I don't do. really understand that. I like you, busting balls though. No, I know, but you don't think I'm a sarcastic <laughs> person. Everything I say, you're like, No, what? No, that's not true. Well, because there's you say so many things that aren't sarcastic that yes. you're dead serious about that it's like you know, I have to assume it's so all So you think somewhere in your mind that I saw some paperwork that led me to believe <laughs> yeah. that somewhere you had actually become the president of show business. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid you did see the it paperwork. Turns it out does I did exist, see the paperwork. Your secret is out and out. It shall remain. Perfect. Uh, Greg Russ is back with us. He's in a little cubby hole. He calls it an apartment. It's in New York City, the big city. Greg, you there? I'm here. I get your sense of humor, and I don't like you calling him the CEO of Show Business either. I what, just, is, uh, what is your objection? S- stop. It just makes me feel inferior. Oh, okay. So look <laughs> at that. See, you think I'm belittling you, and he thinks that I'm raising you above him. I can't win in this room. You can't. So how about you just introduce people? There's I, Autumn. There's Michael. There's I, Greg. I have... <laughs> I have one ally in this room at all times, and he is practiced in mixed martial arts, so I wouldn't mess with him all that much. And today, he's got like throwback 80s or 50s sunglasses on. I'm talking about my only friend in the room, Dr. X. Oh, wait. I forgot to set the date and time on that one. They can't see me, but hey. Oh, well, great. Dr. X. So the one guy I got on my side lets me down just as we, as we stumble out of the, uh, out of the deal here. Um, what did you have the lens closed? Did you have the lens thing closed or something? No. All right, I'm I'm <laughs> tired. Greg, he's messing up this morning. I'm tired because <laughs> my kids were up all night playing guitars and being loud, and I wanted them. To, you ever? Well, you've not dealt with this because you're not a parent yet. But there was a part of me that wanted to be the old man who bounds out of the room and says, "I have to wake up early and do something." But then there's other things like I want my kids to have fun in their own house. Sure. So I ended up not getting a lot of sleep. Plus, I've been um, binging. On my new guilty pleasure, uh, which is the show Scandal, <laughs> which is a completely ridiculous show. I guess it's been on for a few years. I just found it on Netflix. This show is one of these shows where you roll your eyes until you're hooked. I mean, if, you, if you're going to come in going, oh, that would never happen in Washington, D.C., then you're completely out of the loop. It's like a cartoon. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And this lead person, Olivia Pope, awesome, awesome. I'm t- <laughs> you gotta you gotta watch this show because it is both ridiculously stupid mm-hmm. and um, addicting at the compelling. same time. It's compelling. It's yeah. compellingly stupid, and they've they've rolled me in, and I'm now a a scandalite or what, whatever you would call scandal file a, f- a scandal a scandal file a fan of this ridiculously stupid show. It's just a soap opera. It's just murder, intrigue, and sex. You know, and it's ridiculous, and I can't stop watching it. So it's it's within the threshold. Of, of, of believability for you, no, I guess? No, yes. No, it's no. It's in no threshold of believability. Because if it's too Zero stupid, believability. if it's too stupid, then you can't get past it and you can't get into it. So it okay, must be let like... let me ask you this. Yeah. I say it's like a cartoon. Is Spider-Man beyond the ability of the threshold of... Well, he of got bit by possi- a spider. Yes, it's just a story you've heard <laughs> for a long time, but it's ridiculous. That does not happen. Yeah. Um, and this is the same it thing. Could it's just a cartoon to me. And yeah, but I would love that to happen. I don't. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't care if the scandal thing. Like that's not something like, ooh, maybe this could be me one day. <laughs> well, that's true. You can't really. <laughs> this is you don't. Superhero. You don't identify right. with these characters exactly. and think I want to do that. Whereas Spider Man, if you're a kid right. or a kid at heart, absolutely, you would want to be Spider Man. <laughs> I would, I would Although after seeing Spider-Man. that musical in New York City, I don't know that I'd want to be Spider Man. I saw a touring version of Spider Man. Turn out the dark? No, it was long before that. Uh, I was just maybe just out of high school, and the Fox Theater. It was like some weird. It was like I thought it was going to be a fun, like oh, this would be like a Broadway. No, it was, it was a lot of kids oh. and me and a date. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is weird. Where did you see this? It was at the Fox. Oh, really? Yeah. And was it uh, some kind of local high school production? No, it was a touring, legit, like stunt show. It okay. was like the Spider Man Stunt Spectacular, I think it was called. That's fair. I, I'd go to that. Yeah, and uh, it was awesome. Uh, but and then when I saw that the the Broadway thing was coming out, I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. And apparently, not even. Oh close. no! It's, I, I was wait, wait, Eric. Yes. You said you liked it. 
I like it was uh, a guilty pleasure. And it was also an impulse bit? buy. Weren't you just walking by the theater? Yeah, my wife and I were had a few hours to kill. We're in Times Square. We walked by the Spider Man theater. And I'm like, you know what? I've read so much about people dying and sure. everything going wrong. I have got to see this show. Spectacle. Now, I didn't know it was like a two and a half hour commitment when I walked in. The damn thing, the long intermission, whatever. And the thing is, the music by Bono and the Edge is awful. It's a musical with bad music. That's the problem. So once, if you've got a musical with bad music, they're going to look stupid up there. But on the other hand, the high-flying theatrics of Spider-Man literally whizzing over your head and landing on behind you and all is if I was eight or nine years old and, and I went to see something like that, I'd think about it for two straight months. Sure. You know, like it would be really cool in that sense because it was the, the acrobatics they were doing were, were neat. But the music was awful. And I realized as I walked out, I'm thinking, well, of course the music's going to be awful because The Edge and Bono are in U2 and they have to put out new albums. And the other members of the band might be like, what are you, you taking that good song and putting in what? You know, <laughs> it's like, so obviously they got to, it's all the songs that wouldn't make a U2 album end up on right. this thing, you know, not quite good enough for a U2 album. So it didn't well, have any it. flow. I saw a promo video for it because that's the most I'm going to do with Broadway shows. Mm-hmm. Even though I do enjoy Broadway shows, I think that uh, a lot of work goes into them. And whenever I go, I'm inspired because they have to do the same show every yes, single day do. of their lives and pretend it's the first time. But with the Spider-Man, there was one point where all these villains were on stage. Like every villain, I guess, in Spider-Man's <laughs> world was featured on the stage. It's a very and, ridiculous part of the show. Well, they, they all have great costumes, except there was this one. I think it's like a half T-Rex man, but yes. it's like a blow-up. It's a yes. balloon. So yeah. here's this. Here's all these great costumes that have been designed. A lot of work, and it feels like they just ran out of time. And said, like, "Yeah, put a balloon on that guy." And didn't you say he didn't inflate? Yeah, it looks like a floaty oh. kind of thing. It looks like so everybody like a yeah, parade. Yeah, parade I mean, the, float. The, uh, the 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 villain that has the the sparklers going and everything looks really <laughs> cool. And there's fire on some of them, and they look really really awesome. And then there's the one guy who's the prof- he's half professor and he's half dinosaur, and it really looks like those floaty things that you use for a pool. They just put one of those things around him with a dinosaur, and the, 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 <laughs> and he's just walking around. This is the around. Broadway production. This is the Broadway wow. production, and. Uh, it, which was a pretty high flying production otherwise, but Greg's right. This one guy, you know what? Just give him a thing. And the day I was there, it didn't inflate fully. Oh. So he was walking around with a limp dinosaur on him. So. Oh. <laughs> the limp dinosaur. So Sometimes you don't need to make jokes. Didn't you see the. Uh, didn't you, Greg, didn't you tell me you saw the Green Day play? Is that still in New York? Is it still. Uh, no, that thing shut down pretty quickly. It's coming to Atlanta, first of all. It it's is. On tour yeah. now. No going on tour. They're it's on only tour. because of the music. It is coming it's, soon it's, to the Fox. I saw I that preview terrible. when I went to go see once. They, they had a. And the. <laughs> They do previews at theaters now. They like, uh, there was like a video like playing in the right. lobby, and I remember people. Well, I can't remember where the hell I was. I was in a, where a group of people, and a commercial. No, it was a TV commercial came on for it. And no, it was when I was at Diesel watching Walking Dead a week ago. <laughs> a commercial All right, came now on. Now we have put you where you were. Because oh yeah, no, and there's a reason because at, like the people that go to this this bar to watch Walking Dead, they're like fanatical. You know, right. they like really cool things. And then during the commercial break, it's still quiet. Because people are watching, and the first, and everyone was dead silent watching this, and the laughter happening, watching these actors like do the Green Day musical yeah. was hilarious. <laughs> I, I kind of want to go see it though, honestly, like just because it seems yeah. so silly. Well, and I have a, a guy that I knew when I went to high school was in the Broadway production. Like Greg he was saw him study or something like Greg that. Greg saw it like before it opened. I think. Yeah. Don't don't pay too much to go see it. it that, don't worry, I got, I'm sure I'll get discounted tickets. I went somewhere. to a preview. <laughs> And uh, Billy Joe was there playing with the band, and still that couldn't save it at that point. The problem with it is the music was already written, so they had to write a story to fit yeah. the music instead of writing a story and writing Ugh. music for the story. Right. So the, the moral of that story is don't leave your hometown because if you do, you'll become a heroin addict, but then you'll get clean, you'll go home, and everyone will love you. Oh, well, you ruined the play. So yeah, why not? Well, she said spoiler alert. So why nope. not become a I'm heroin not, addict? Not. If in the end he ends up yeah. all right... Right. That's how every. That's what happens at the end of every heroin addict story. Yeah, that's you what know I think. That? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, they're doing studies about how a lot of times you'll have guys who kicked heroin and stuff like that do commercials. You know, if an actor is famous or or whatever kind of drugs thing, and they did a lot of studying of this, and they found out that it has absolutely the wrong message to someone who's 17 or 18 or 19. Someone who's so if you get an actor who says, "Hey, man, it just about killed me," and blah blah blah, blah a 19 year goes. 
Well, he did all right. Right. Yeah. He's, he's 45. He pulled himself together. And the message that gets out there isn't don't do it. The message that gets out there is, well, I'm an actor and I'm still getting work. Like you can make it through. Yeah. <laughs> that's the message that's taken. Yeah, um, May 1st through 4th at the Fox American Idiot. Ugh. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to go see it. It's just what they're calling you if you buy a ticket. Right. <laughs> you American yeah. idiot. You hit Boom. It. You hit it, Greg. That, that's the problem. A lot of these things, I think uh, where they make the story after the songs are already developed, and it's got to be awkward. Because when they're when Green Day's making their albums, they're not trying to make songs string together. So you got to put together this sort of weird Well, uh, American Idiot kind of was a concept album that had right. a, a it was story about how- and underlying theme to it, but it... You know, about George this Bush. musical doesn't even match that at all. Do they do they include other Green Day songs not off of that album? They better. Uh, no, it actually is. I think only that album. Oh, really? Oh, okay. okay, then I'm totally off the mark. You mean you don't even get to hear the Green Day hits? No, nothing from what? Dookie. Yeah, Dookie. Oh, come on. Uh, you don't even get the hits. I remember, get I, remember seeing, Idiot. I remember seeing Green Day, you know, in 96, 97 when uh, Big Day Out was a big yeah. thing yeah. here in Atlanta. Atlanta. And they were setting their, they were setting everything on fire. Like after their show, they'd they'd, ki- they'd smash all their guitars and drums, and they would light, put fuel on it, and they light it on punks. fire. Yeah. It was awesome. And now it's like, get out of here, you YouTube hack <laughs> wannabes. <laughs> Look, how old is are they now? In their early forties. Right. Yeah. You can't go smashing things anymore because then people look at them. What are you doing? Well, that's You're 40 true. something years old. So You're wearing mascara. Stop lighting shit on fire. Ooh, he did they does have... wear a lot of eye makeup. Yeah, yeah. I'll do. Well, now, yeah. now that he's like a woman. He doesn't want to age. Ugh. So he takes he take off the makeup now. Uh, what American Idiot, that was a hit. Were there a bunch of other songs off there that Time were hits? Time of My Life. That's not. Isn't that's that early. off of that one? That's the no. song Wake Me Up When November Ends or yes. September oh, Ends. Their oh, worst yeah. song ever. Wake Me Up. When November, oh, that's a horrible song. Wait, that's wait, a horrible. Why do you sound like Springsteen? It was catchy. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it did right sound over there. Like the, 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 the problem yeah. is that they were they were all catchy and they didn't. They had. T- I think they. I think the problem is that if those were if that was their first album, it would have been a huge hit. Yeah, but like, it was a hit. I think American Idiot I mean, was a hit. They would have be. They right. could continue on with that, but because they came from yeah. Dookie, yeah, you know, which was a groundbreaking you know punk pop album. I love that, that album. You know, they tr- me, then they try to mature. And then now they can't do it anymore. What is this? American Idiot. Is yeah, I remember. I remember this being a hit because it was the whole uh, George Bush is, and I don't want to, you know that. And this is this was the lead off of that album, if I'm not mistaken. When you fight this terrorism, this is the first single, sure. and it's like, oh, this kind of this has the same tempo, yeah, this yeah. has the same kind of yeah. vibe, and then they go into you know, wake me up. Yeah, what's you know, the wake they had, me they had up? All, they had a lot of ballads on that album. Before November. Yeah. Because like, I just want to get in the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. <laughs> yeah, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I think oh, yeah. The yeah. Yeah. I can't Which is also the, it's also probably the name of 400 horrible yes. yeah. <laughs> you know, emo bands. Uh, Boulevard <laughs> of Broken <laughs> Dreams. Uh, I got to think, speaking of Springsteen, that's in, that's in some old notebook somewhere that never made an album. Boulevard, Boulevard of Broken, broken Dreams. Dreams. Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I'm going to take you to the edge of town. <laughs> and Avenue dump your of body Shattered in the hearts. river. Yeah. There's a lot of variations. <laughs> Avenue of Shattered Hearts. <laughs> Yeah, when when one band comes around, hey man, we're suing you. That's our name, okay? And then you just, oh yeah, you just street yeah. of stump. Yeah, this is all right. It's not that bad. This is all right. It's all right, but uh, you know, the, 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 I think the problem is because of their their roots. Right. People had a hard time, you know. Which one is this? This is Boulevard. This is okay. shattered hearts of, of <laughs> men of America. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, they I, just came from such a good place, and then they had that song. That every high school graduation played, and they oh, probably the still best play. Time of that, my life, time yeah. of your life. Which yeah. is well, called not, good It's called yeah, good riddance. It's oh, not right. called time of my life, but it's uh, that yeah, was like sure. their. It's called turn it down. That was like an ant. No, nah, man, because that 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 song was huge for me, and I think everybody in, in, yes. in my and you didn't not, not for you. No, no, no. really. All right, we're gonna get to autumn. Yeah. Time of your life. You learn a lot about that, autumn. That song was like because that was like the song that made you cry, and you're gonna you knew your girlfriend was gonna break up with you after high school. Like that's what that song was, meant. I imagine maybe, a lot of people. A makeup was, song too. Maybe I was just past it. No, that's I what you said. I'm sorry. I Make graduated out, I mean. in 2000. So I graduated maybe, in 2002. That's not. What I'm saying, maybe that maybe it was so more old, significant. Just after, yeah, you might be right. Yeah, the vitamin C song was a big one back then too. Friends forever. Oh my God, the graduation yeah. song. Yeah. <laughs> See, my problem with uh, the uh, "Wake Me When November Ends" not only is it a ballad and a horrible ballad to me, but it has the word "November" in it, which reminds me of my least favorite ballad of all time, "November Rain" <gasps> I love by Guns N' Roses. Rain. That is the worst song <laughs> that was ever <laughs> written in the history of the world. I that loved is the, it. And the video, amazing, of it, awful. <laughs> 
full of empty symbolism, like slashes, <laughs> ripping the guitar in front of the cross on the church. It's like, you look at it, you go, this is supposed to mean something. And yet it doesn't. <laughs> it's completely hollow. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I don't know the song. Hey, I'm gonna, rain? I'm gonna put yeah. you yeah, in the yeah, place you know the there. What? what? That song, by the way, is about the death of Billy Joe Armstrong's dad, who died when he was a child. So it's very meaningful time to him. What? November rain? Of... That was no, so strange yeah. to me. No, the no, no. Wake me up when September ends. Not I... November rain. There's no meaning to any of those songs. All right. Okay. I'll give you. No, I'm not going after. Is this Guns and Roses? So this is the good. worst <laughs> song I ever. It. I love it so much. Axel's up there with the piano. Oh yeah, I'm really. Oh, here we go. I, I love it. All right, come on, girls. You can enjoy Guns N' Roses, too. Well, this is like um, this is like uh, uh, that part in any sort of demise of a group band. Yeah. It's like, let's start, let's bring the orchestra yeah, in. Yeah, you know? yeah. In the slow motion, like, yeah. rocking as their hair. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on, this is the best. I remember... We're not just idiots who bang chicks all day and night. No. We think. They're me- they have we think. deep thoughts. <sighs> I remember sitting in the bathtub, and I used to take this bath, I guess, every Saturday and listen to Casey Kasem. With the camera on. And this was on, yeah, with the camera, because I started young with the camera on. It was like shog, except bath. Yeah. Who's playing the violin? Slash? Yeah. Somebody else on the keyboard. Oh, this really isn't Guns N' Roses, then, is what you're saying. But yeah, I would listen to this, and like, this was number one for a while. Are there words to this song? (laughs) Yeah, we get to it eventually, but... When I look into your eyes... There it is. (laughs) I hate this guy. I can see love I will oversee everything. He has a lot of emotions. Listen. I'm a I'm a big mom. I like a monster ballad every now and again. I, I, I can get behind this. I've never heard this. I know. I know you're making fun of. Chorus. Of course. No. There we go. Get your lighters on. Karaoke this is on the show. <laughs> Here it is. And it's hard to hold the candle in the cold November rain. Turn to shit. Need some time. <laughs> he I'm also now. he ruined Live and Let Die. God, he ruined Live and Let Die and Knocking on Heaven's Door. Two yeah. unbelievable classics. I, don't know, that, I, he, I like that Live and Let Die cover. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. When he, what, I know you're. Turn making, this, I remember you were making fun of Slash. Mood. No, no, I like Slash. But I mean, in front of that church, that <laughs> yeah. is a badass part. He comes out. It's a horrible part. He comes <laughs> out and there's a helicopter shot. And he's yeah, but it doesn't mean anything. It's a shot that should mean it looks something. Cool. But it just—it's empty. It doesn't mean anything. It's it, empty, just like the church. He <laughs> there's your meaning. Yeah. Nine, nine years. <laughs> nine years. Axl Rose worked on November Rain. That—that that was it for him. Nine years? His masterpiece. That was, yeah, he that said was he started Chinese. writing it in 1983. Really? And it was released in 92. Wow. God, imagine so, how bad. I was 10. It, imagine how bad it would have been if it was released in 91. So apparently that Green Day song is when September ends. We're getting uh, yes. we're getting uh, railed on the social stream right now. Yes, yeah, well. We're the worst. <laughs> it gives him something to <laughs> chat about. That's how much about. we care about that. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, he ruined, uh, I don't like Axel singing. He, he, there's a guy, and you guys will not know who this person is, but when I was growing up, he was on The Tonight Show a lot, and he was a Broadway singer, but a guy named Anthony Newley. And he Andy? would. <laughs> I think he he had a song called "Stop the World, I Want to Get Off" or something like that. It was, but he would show up on the Tonight Show and he had this way of singing that was like, <laughs> to me, Axl Rose is the sweet November rain. Just annoys the shit out of me. Well, if it sounded like that, it would annoy me too. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That's Are you a professional to me. singer? Is that <laughs> where you started? <laughs> that. That's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sweet Child of Mine and Welcome to the Jungle, and that's it. Those are the only two Guns N' Roses songs I've ever heard that I like. The rest are crap on top of crap stacked in a bookshelf of crap. That's incredible. That's a lot of that's a lot of things you just said. And why wouldn't I just listen to Led Zeppelin if I wanted to hear a really good band that kind of sounds like that? What you're comparing Led Zeppelin? You're saying no. I'm not comparing. I'm not. I'm saying that, that Guns N' Roses Guns Zeppelin? and Roses is derivative of of bands from the 70s like Led Zeppelin. Well, you could say that about a lot of things. You can. Well, everything's derivative in rock and roll. That's yeah. the word I couldn't think of on the, the other, on the other podcast. Oh, derivative. Yeah. Rock and roll is a derivative art form. There's oh. nothing wrong with it. But you can either do it right or you can do it wrong. And, and Guns N' saying- Roses does it wrong. I'm not saying Guns N' Roses does it right, but they sure did with November Rain. <laughs> <laughs> with September rain. Uh, September yeah. rain. It was, it's the when November ends and September rain, which <laughs> piss everybody in the chat room off for the rest of the show. Yeah. 
Uh, so very quickly, because we're we I don't know how we got off on Green Day and Guns N' Roses, but we started with <laughs> Broadway. My binge thing, and we didn't have Greg here yesterday. We talked about this briefly yesterday, but I want to get Greg's point of view on it because Greg and I talk about space an awful lot. So uh, he's a big Neil deGrasse Tyson guy, who's the host of the new Cosmos. I the, used to be a big Neil deGrasse Tyson guy. Did you see Cosmos? I did see Cosmos. I was disappointed. Um, what, what, what about you? Well, I think I told you once before I lost my job to go see Neil deGrasse Tyson speak. So I yeah. was a big fan. I left work early. I got up to the Natural History Museum. I got off the train. Text message from my boss. Where did you go? I wrote back. I'm going to see Neil deGrasse Tyson speak. Quite frankly, it's more important than this job. Ooh. And then that night, I was like, well, nice. I got to resign now. Yeah, I think you lost the job because of your attitude more than the fact that you weren't there at that point. Well, I, I quit. They I couldn't even fire me. You so know, Neil deGrasse corporations, Tyson, by the way, if what? they want to fire you, they have to make such a case against you, you have at least a year, unless you do something so egregious. Right. You if you're just slacking what? off at work, they, they need to build a case and go through HR and put you on probation. I know how to work that system. So you just <laughs> threw your hands up at that point and said, I'm going to go with science and not your stupid corporate factory. And it was great watching him speak. It was about uh, the demotion of Pluto, and he put up children's letters because children oh. were angry and yeah. uh, wrote him letters because he was instrumental in That's this. That's how he and, got a lot of his fame was that he was the only one that when ki- would, would yell at kids, it's not a planet, shut yeah. up, go home. And then he, yeah, he put their letters up on a, on a projector and made fun of their spelling and their grammar. <laughs> They're like in, seven-year-olds. Right. I, I think laugh. I saw on Cosmos when they went past Pluto that it was flipping him off. He was like, yeah, you, yeah. Neil. Well, it's funny. No, yeah, it's that's funny. What happens do- when you get Seth MacFarlane involved? Very funny. Yeah, yep. no, you know what well, happens? Humor, is, but he humor did. Going. He he for for insiders, he does kind of like when he get, and also Pluto's out there. Yeah. So you knew when he said that his. So my thing. So what did you think? I was just a little let down. You know, I'm rooting well, I, for it, but I, I I was all hyped up and I felt let down. I th- I personally think it's a great. It's gonna be a great start. Like it's a good set up. A pretty impressive. I'm hoping it's gonna be good. The I'm graphics hoping. are amazing. I think it moves too the, quickly. The graphics are amazing. Yeah, yeah. I thought the graphics were. A I thought little they were goofy. awesome. I, I liked Carl Sagan, but I was, I was hoping that was an homage to the old one. I thought they were terrible. I thought yeah. they looked like a I the seven-year-old that Neil deGrasse Tyson's make fun of. He makes fun of <laughs> that's, Drew the graphics. That's why I liked them is because they weren't like right. they weren't trying to blow you away. It was clearly on a green screen. Like yeah, yeah I dug that. I dug and as as the first one was, it was completely absurd. This space. That's why I gave that, that a pass. In. I thought, well, the first one, so maybe this is what they're doing on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt like he was. I don't know. I, I don't know what it was. I, I, what is there? Ten more episodes? I'm hoping it gets better. But um, I was a little, for all my hype going into it, Neil deGrasse Tyson was a little bit boring. I thought. As he was host. boring. I thought the uh, the whole animation sequence yeah. with uh, Bruno. I liked was lame. it. Lame. Yeah, the the guy that how was that done? Traveled was that, the earth, believing how, in science. Yeah, how was that story done in the first one? Was it done in animation, or did they have the old actors? At first, I like I like the animation because I thought, well, usually what happens here is you get these sort of New York City actors, and they put on monks' robes and they walk <laughs> around and act like they're these people. Fake and beard. I've seen that enough, so I don't mind the animation as a concept. I just thought the animation itself looked like some, a cartoon I would have saw when I was six. I thought it was nice because it looked like old baby books of you know yeah, what these maybe. people look like you know i don't mean? know something just didn't work for i me. liked it it didn't you guys i think the commercial breaks were crazy. poorly timed too oh, how like about were, the noah were, stuff that that's comes true, up they you, were. Got, you got you got an animation of the church the inquisition basically burning this guy at the stake because he has the audacity to uh tell people what's really happening in the universe and then that gets interrupted with a huge biblical <laughs> commercial for noah <laughs> i thought that that was okay you know i i, I get that <laughs> I get Sir. that, but also, what if it was just a commercial for like a, a Disney movie about a Greek mythology? You know what right, I, mean? I know, but I'm just saying if this is this thing. is hitting that religion. Hey, come this see the right. people who burnt that guy. You just saw. yeah, <laughs> see how they got started. <laughs> I did like the fact that they had the balls to kind of show as the guy was getting burnt that the shot is of like the cross and the the cardinals coming at him. Yeah, and so there was nothing to. I mean, you're telling an 11 year old. You know, Christianity killed these people, uh, well, which takes balls. Yeah. You know, especially it's on history. Fox. They didn't. No, I yeah. think it's great. <laughs> yeah. Was look, that look story in the first one though? Do you remember, Greg? I do not remember if that was in the first one. I'm sure it was. They, they stuck. They stuck to the first script pretty. I mean, they moved around it. I thought, and maybe we'll find out more. And I'll stop talking about Cosmos. I'm sure it's like NASCAR to most of our listeners right now. But I think that. Um, well, it was they, everywhere. If you if you look yeah. at the TV, the, the guide on the TV, it's on every channel. So maybe the listeners were forced to watch it because there was nothing else. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I will predict that the second episode will have lower ratings than the first, 
and I don't think it's going to be prime time material. I just don't think people are going to get into it. I don't, um, and it's it's just it's a little too boring. But I maybe think they set better. it up that way though by putting it on multiple channels and multiple right. networks within the family of networks. Mm-hmm. So that way, when they move it over there, they it's go, like, oh, oh no, no, no that was the plan. You right. know, you know, it was the plan the whole it, time. It's going to get better ratings than a lot of shit that's on TV. So right. you know, right. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to DVR every Look, episode. Fox Sunday Night is pretty. Uh, that's that's pretty good. Is that ground. its home? Is that going to be its home? Yeah, I, Fox uh, is producing it. Well, Fox is, but it's well, I know stay- they're producing it, but they have such a network that it doesn't need to be on right. the Fox. I network. think that the first run is supposed to be Sundays at nine on Fox. Why would they get you there the first time right. to switch it out on you the second time? So I think that that's uh, that's where it is. But anyway, you know, well, go on the, on the, the, the original yes. didn't have commercials, so that's a weird adjustment. That's true. First right. one was on PBS. So I think too that it was um, just like what we said that it, it's the it's the warm up. You know, this was the overview. Of everything, it's not getting into some interesting details about like how things were formed. You know, yeah, but think, that's you know? not what I'm worried about. It's just the overall I effect. Better. I thought was kind of boring. Yeah. You know, I, I, the reason, and maybe they'll go into this. The reason that you should, I was excited about Neil deGrasse Tyson and new CGI and this mm-hmm. kind of stuff is because we know a lot more now, way a lot more now about the subject matter Sagan was talking about then, and we have really cool, awesome things now that he didn't have pictures, he didn't have the ability, and I just. Thought, I don't know. I him zipping through. It just seemed like it was going too fast, covering too much ground, not really getting into anything. And well, that, that's it's you know. It's, it's as much no as overview. I like the original, I, I love the original. I think that they tried too much to honor the original, to hopefully right. they'll deviate away from it because and it, it should be its own show, even if it's Cosmos again. And the thing with Neil deGrasse Tyson, I don't want to say that I do actually hate him now. I don't. <laughs> In my mind, he's going to go out of control. He's going to become. This huge asshole with yeah. a big ego, which you can see yeah. the ego's already there, but if it spirals yeah. like out of Bill control, Nye, I'll hate him, so I'm just <laughs> being proactive. Nobody can be, have a bigger ego than Michu Kaku. Oh, yes. There's no comparison. No, that guy's the nicest. He's great, though. He's nice, yeah, but he I mean, he's got. he definitely has a pompous, you yeah. don't know anything more than I do. <laughs> you know when that guy... <laughs> there was, is simply... The way he talks even is just like, I'm going to talk as slow yeah, as I can. That guy... Can. Yeah, that, yeah, guy just, that guy <laughs> was... Um, <laughs> apparently, I think he was... I think that he was hired by AT&T or something when he was 15 or 16 years old, this Michio Kaku. There are things that Bad text thing? messaging you will provide so us <laughs> in the <laughs> future. This is wild. <laughs> Speed it up, Kaku. Get closer to your mic, Greg. I'm just, I'm just, I think that's a racist. The reason he speaks that way is because he's an Asian man. Yeah, you're going after Kaku. Just you know how the Kaku. Asians are always talking so slow? You know that <laughs> Asian be all like, wow. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm, 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 I'm audio book. I'm listening to a Michio Kaku book right now. Michio Which one? Kaku. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Michio. I'll have to look it up. So I have, a twi- I have a Twitter handle somewhere out there. Hold on, it a... is. Yeah, Parallel Worlds. That's the one. Yeah, I'm reading the book. Oh, really? I'm, well, I'm listening to the audio. We can compare notes. Look at us. Who's good friends on the show, huh? Take huh? note. Huh? Take note, everyone we, else. We didn't even know we were reading the same books. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> hey, give me some uh, Patreon music, and we'll put Autumn up on deck for news. Well, and give stuff. us money because you haven't been. Greg, why don't you come up? Why don't you make this? Look at my face and listen to Greg. Greg, tell people what they need to know. I think that you should go to uh, Patreon.com, look up Eric Von Radio, and give us money. That's what I think because every day I check this because. This show needs money yeah. because I'm going to leave New York and come to Atlanta and I need money. Yes. And I look and we're stuck on how many donors at this point? 57. Now you have 57 to, donors. Now you Nobody see, is giving money. You're making, I think you need to give Greg, us money. Greg. Give us money. <laughs> Please Greg. give us money <laughs> else you are going to ruin my life because I am going to move to a city and have no money. So Greg, please. you're making a mistake. Please, um, please. Let's say that you're in a rock band, right? And you, you, you're going to a club and... You're doing really well in other places. Then you show up at this one club, and there's only 15 people in the crowd, right? Now, you could be one kind of rock band that appreciates those 15 people and puts on a hell of a show, or you can go out there and yell at everybody because there's nobody there, but those 15 people who are there did pay for their tickets, so why should you yell at them? Don't yell at the 57 people who have given money. They're, they're the people who, who are making all of this possible. Well, you're, you're trying to widen the appeal, I would think. You have to clean up my mess now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's going to be less money in Patreon yeah. as people pull it out after that attitude of yours. Thank you very much, Greg Russ. So, yeah, you heard the man. Uh, if you want to be part of this, be a part of our team, do something about the sucky state of radio. Go to Patreon.com, Eric Von Radio. Plenty of different levels there where you give money and we give you bumper stickers and T-shirts, which are coming, by the way. We should get them out of the house next week. <laughs> out of the house. By the house, I mean in-house, out-house. Yeah. 
not to a the toilet. Adults? No, I didn't, mean it that way. Do no I didn't mean it that way at all. I meant in house as these in, people are, are like really a donating way. a lot of money. So they, they are. You shouldn't throw their you know bumper sticker down the Do you toilet. know who I love? Who? 57 people who have Green Day. been so <laughs> cool, and Green Day and Guns N' Roses, yeah. who have been so cool to go to Patreon. Go there, check it out, join this team. Patreon.com. Want to mention Amazon as well? Uh, Autumn does. Yeah. Um, if you want to uh, buy something off of Amazon, which of course you do, because I don't know where else you're buying things, um, go to ericvonradio.com. Click through our Amazon banner link. You can um, bookmark it from there. And then every time you go to Amazon to buy something awesome, uh, we'll get a little uh, kickback. It doesn't cost you anything doesn't extra. It cost you anything. We get yeah. a little something back. So go for it. And do here's it. the thing. And go for it. What, are you a doctor or something like that? And you're going to order really expensive stuff? Just bookmark us. Go through us every time. And you're favorite show gets a little kickback you may have to turn off your ad blocker the first time to get the banner to come up on the page yeah that's it and also you know itunes subscribe to us love us we have a really good uh we have a really good review rate uh, rate us comment on us yeah so give us five stars it's our favorite number well don't don't go pimping for that give us the stars you think are worth it something you know if if you're tuning in and thinking (laughs) really 10 minutes of Cosmos, you know, uh, uh, let us know. We, we can could, we could take it. It's all right. Well, if you don't like that, maybe you can, you can like this. I, just, I want to put a bow tie on this because I forgot I have this. I have a Twitter account called at uh, Kakudashian, uh. <laughs> which is a mashup of Michu Kaku tweets and Kim Kardashian tweets. Fun. And I haven't done it since July 2012. I started it and then I yes. just got over it, but I'm going to start doing it again. I just combine the tweets. You take their real tweets. Their real tweets and, and make put them sense together. out of them. No, I just put them together. But I, mean, they, they run I just together. did an interview on CNN about Pluto, aliens from space, etc. Just got the best spray tan ever. Awesome. <laughs> those are the combined tweets I of Michu Kaku and Kim Kardashian. I love it. I you love can the follow character. it at Kakudashian, K-A-K-U-D-A-S-H-I-A-N. Kakudashian. I'm going to start doing it again. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Autumn. Yeah. What are you looking at on the interwebs? Uh, so that Malaysian airline is still missing. They still, still haven't found mystery. that damn thing. Yeah, it's called. They're calling it an unprecedented aviation mis- Who's aviation they? mystery. Who's they? Uh, Guns and Roses. Senior official from something. It's the worst <laughs> aeronautical. Blast. And the plane went down. down. <laughs> and we can't find it anywhere. It's not a very good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sounds go better to it. me than Axl Rose. <laughs> I had to go for it. You could, you know, when Axl Rose is singing, I want somebody to hammer a nail into my forehead just Aww. to distract me. Anyway, go ahead. I think he liked to do that to his wives. Yeah. Yeah. He's wasn't a freaky he? dude, and he's a redhead. Didn't he? Can't uh, trust him. <laughs> didn't he beat some some of his wives up? <laughs> got a white guy with cornrows. You can't trust that. Ever. No, no, you can't trust That's that. That's the new Axl. Did he beat up women back then? His wife, I think he like slapped All right, around well, his wife. Maybe I've been too tough on him. <laughs> Breaking news. Breaking news. In the 80s, <laughs> Axl Rose beat up his wife. What are you looking for? What are you going all around looking for? I feel like you're vamping. Why are you pulling back the curtain right now? <laughs> what is in the newsies? Yeah, so this Malaysian airline is still down. Um, they say that the um, oil slick that they looked down. at, well, I'm sorry, they still can't find it. Um, they saw an oil slick and they tested it and they said it was not jet fuel. Yeah. They saw this wa- a yellow thing floating and they thought, oh, maybe that's a life raft. Oh, it's some like garbage that has moss on it. So it's just a regular old ocean with yeah. shit piled Trash. up on top that of it. That did bum me out. It was the like plastic it's like garbage ca- island. Exactly. It was like this cable that grew some moss on it. Um, yes. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> What? Not interested. Yeah, no, no, Michael. Like, I just know you throw that out there. It's like the ocean is huge, well, huge. It still sucks. go look for the BP oil. You can't find it. The ocean is huge, huge. It and still yes, every once in a while you're gonna see a thing or two. Just, just keep dumping into it. But yeah, well, it's huge. It's three quarters of the planet, and it's uh, huge. No one's getting mad at you. If you got stuck out there, you would not get back. <laughs> It still doesn't mean that we should just like toss whatever we want in there. The, oh, this is why I don't eat seafood. Because it's supposed to be crappy out there. Oh You're my supposed God. to dump all your refuse oh out there. Why, oh would I eat, why would I eat the creatures that eat the stuff that I Fish throw poop out there. out there. They poop Fish. right in the water. Yeah, what are you going to do about that, Greenpeace? You gonna oh, stop I, was, the, uh, I was snorkeling once and I saw fish poop and I got immediately out of the water and back into the boat. <laughs> what does that look like? <laughs> I mean, it's more of just like a cloud just that comes cloud, out of yeah. the butt. <laughs> I, I, I want to create my own. I just own. got back in, and the, the person on the boat, are you sick or something? No, I'm not sick. You're not seasick? No, I feel fine. 
did you, I just, I just saw, no thanks. I just saw a fish defecate. It was too much. The shit. only reason people care is because mammals live in the ocean. If there weren't dolphins and whales, people would say, let the fish rot, let the sharks die. Right. Let the eels shrivel into nothing. Man, you guys are bummers. choke on our plastic. <laughs> you guys are bummers. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, until it's filled up, let's just keep throwing our crap out there. All That's right. what I say. Um, that's a good life <laughs> to leave for your it sons. Hasn't, my, it's, oh, I'm sure it'll come back to haunt us in the next 40 years. They'll dig me up and yell at me. Why didn't you do something about the oceans? It's, it's, on, it's on record now that you, this is what you, you thought. I believe the oceans are a place for our refuse, yes. All right. It's huge. <laughs> I'm glad you're not running for uh, Senate anymore. Oh, that's my bumper sticker. That's your bumper sticker. <laughs> Fuck the ocean. Vote <laughs> <Boat> Hessler. <laughs> The ocean. That's the new bumper sticker. As That's soon as it. we ever get these other ones off the Fuck ground, Fuck the ocean. <laughs> um, I think we have a name for our episode. Today. Definitely. Yeah. Fuck, Fuck the ocean. ocean. Is that a demerit? <laughs> no, because no. I'm going to put that uh, asterisk sign. Uh, or something. Gonna... At symbol. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, it seems crazy that they can't find it, but one someone is saying, you know, did it disintegrate? Um, That's what I'm guessing. Something catastrophic happened because they found out that uh, the person. Two, the, the two people. Well, yeah, I was going to get to that. Oh, I don't know. Are you yelling at me? Can I not jump to it now? Do you have something else you wanted to say first? Well, I was just going to say it was interesting. Like, I didn't I think about this. I am not, I'm not, you know, attacking your news credibility here. I, think you know, you I was just jumping ahead in the story. I think all. sometimes you know more about the stories. You think you know more about the stories than I do. Am I right or am I wrong? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, I'll, I'll tell people how you corrected me because yesterday I said that they had fake passports. Yeah, and that bummed tell me out. why, and, yeah. and you annoyed me by interrupting me. Well, but. because fake means completely made up to me. Like if you have a fake ID, right. it is not a real ID. Mm-hmm. It's a fake. It's not real. But I, I meant I had, it was fake for them. Right, but if it's but these so it's were stolen, stolen. fraudulent ID. You Fraud, that, that. Well, fraudulent. Don't argue. Sit. Don't argue semantics. Stolen. Stolen. But it does change it. Like if stolen. Because can, can we agree on stolen? Stolen. They were had <laughs> stolen passports. Stolen identities. I, I feel like if they had a fake passport, then that would make me think that Malaysian Airlines is not doing its job and checking. Right. Like well, they it's did credibility. By the way, they didn't because no. every stolen passport is, that oh, they has know like of a, has is put into a thing, and you're supposed to check on international flights. And so Malaysian Airlines didn't do. They were oh, supposed yeah. to be. There's a system in place to catch people who are doing that. Um, but anyway, the the, the yeah. news here is that this guy that one of the two they identified was 19 years old, Iranian, and you go, oh, oh, look out. But it turns out that this guy is Iranian, but he was trying to get asylum in Germany, and his mother was waiting for him in Beijing, so yeah. there doesn't appear to be a terrorist thing. And this is uh, the guy who is you – know, um, <laughs> I thought that I had the dude hmm. – hmm. Hmm. Oh, here it is. The uh, I got my different colors here. Yeah. And I had a little a little system with my audio. Uh huh. And now I don't know what the colors mean. So it's kind of <laughs> like you put the colors in there to make some sense to you. I'll remember that is pink. Like, fuchsia. Why did I put the uh, Malaysia <laughs> thing in fuchsia? I don't understand. You know those Malaysians love fuchsia. So yeah, this is this guy. This is the guy who is the head of the Malaysian investigation talking about the 19 year old. He was because we. He was asked, "How do you know he wasn't a terrorist?" Because we we are in contact with his mother. Okay, his mother is expecting him to arrive in Frankfurt. When he doesn't arrive, he contacted us here, and uh, then then that's why we knew that uh, he's the one traveling on that stolen passport. Well, there you go. So that that's sounds simple. like a. Uh, Andy we, Kaufman? we talked to uh, his mother. He said, "Don't know. He did not steal it, so it's okay." So I I guess I'm wrong. So. It was going to go from China then to Frankfurt, Germany, whatever. The or mother something. was waiting for him yeah. to arrive, and she didn't arrive. So the fact that one of these two guys uh, w- doesn't appear to be a terrorist, that's almost the worst outcome for right, somebody I'm, who's about no to jump answer. on a plane tomorrow, myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, or in, and or I don't in really, five days. I don't really enjoy uh, getting on planes to begin with. But if it's terrorism, you go, okay, somebody went in there, they had a bomb, they did something. If it's not terrorism... Boy, a plane with no bad mechanical record just <laughs> blew up or something and fell out of the sky. Yeah. There's also another couple of things. You know, there was an Egypt Air. Mm-hmm. I remember, I think that this was in the early 2000s, late 90s maybe. A, the pilot committed suicide by shouting a prayer and then just taking the plane down. It was just one guy's madness and the plane just huh. went down. Um, there was a plane, uh, there was a, a French plane that wasn't found for two years that disappeared oh, a few years ago. So um, 
This isn't the first time, really, this kind of thing has happened. Amelia Earhart, yeah. where's you know her what? plane? By the way, every time I see her <laughs> trumpeted as a big woman's figure in history, uh-huh. I just think you failed. You failed. You were supposed to fly across. What was she flying across? The Atlantic, the Atlantic? or the Pacific? Or <laughs> the hell was she? I think she Pacific. did fly across the Atlantic. She flew across. She was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. Maybe so she, she did was trying to go over the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that she they they're always looking for the records, the records, the wreckage <laughs> out um you know out in that area like Pearl Harbor. You yeah. Know. So I don't, I don't I don't know. I think that she was trying to cross the Pacific. So wait, did she, so she did accomplish is, it then? Yes. She did accomplish. She it. accomplished. Yeah. She accomplished being the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. Oh, that's I cool. think. But, well, if you like what have you girls. done for me lately, Amelia Earhart? She, <laughs> <laughs> she was supposed to fly across the Pacific or whatever, at and she time, did not make it. At the time, I mean, the women Buffalo were not. The Buffalo Bills went to four Wasn't Super Bowls, but they're seen as losers. I thought she was uh, making an effort to fly around the world. Obviously not in, oh. without stopping. Yeah, that's... I think that's closer to it. Was she lost in the Bermuda Triangle? No, 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 no. no, no. no. I think that's she was not over. real, right, Eric? No, well, I mean, there's an area. Oh. There's an area that's real down there. Oh, Michael, you believe all that Bermuda Triangle nonsense? When I, was I believe 10 anything years old, that people tell me. When I was 10 years old, I loved that. I was like, oh, was yeah, fun. the Bermuda Triangle. But I grew that. up and realized that, you know, there's, that, you know, there's real science that one could become fascinated with. Did you, so she was going around the world then. So she was going to stop and uh, every once in a while, refuel, stuff like that, go she, to the bathroom and keep on going. <laughs> go to the bathroom. She was the first woman to fly across the I think Atlantic you just have ocean. to go on the plane. It's kind of like the NASCAR driver. Oh, really? Amelia had to just mess herself up. Well, think about it. You're not flying at great speeds. <laughs> no, no, they're flying at right. like, what are they flying? What are they, is it like she was flying at like 60 miles an hour or something? <laughs> well, I assume at least a couple hundred, but <laughs> you know, compared <laughs> to yeah, just aircraft these days. <laughs> yeah, it would take a very long time to get from Los Angeles to Hawaii or something sure. kind of plane. So, um, so there you go. Um, I don't, it's, it's, so it scares the hell out of me. If this type of airliner, but it's just for no good reason, just because yeah. that's my biggest fear. My big, I don't have rational fears. Like when I'm on a when I'm on a uh, roller coaster, mm-hmm. I don't think about the rail breaking so much as I think about what if there was an earthquake while I was on this roller coaster. <laughs> Is this built to earthquake specs? So I always think of like the rail. so when I'm when I'm flying in a plane, the thing that I'm thinking about is what if the wing falls off? <laughs> I mean, I don't care how good the pilot is. He right. We're at 30,000 feet. We lose a wing. This guy is not good enough to get us down to the ground. It's it's the plane actually falling to pieces that but scares if, the hell out of me. Well, no one could get you to the ground. You have no absolutely no, no control, and you yeah. just start to spiral. That's people, what would happen. People, not only would you be going down, you'd be going in circles oh, down. Great way to go. Pilots have been able to like glide planes to a safe With landing, wings. saving a lot of people. With wings. Yeah, but you could also you know die instantly. You just bash your head against the side <laughs> if you know you're going down. Oh, no, that no, way no, you don't no. have to experience I think, uh, it. Don't you, if you go down from 30,000 feet, don't you basically have a heart attack before you hit? I think from the uh, fear, I decompression would think. of the cabin, you'll probably pass, pass out, out from yeah. lack of oxygen. Yeah. You have to put the mask on yourself That's before science. you help others. Why the hell would I put the mask on if there's no hope? I would rather thank you. You got to keep hope. Why would I keep myself? Well, if I pass out, I'm not flying the plane. If they get things worked out, I pass out. I'm going to come too. I'll be fine. It does me no good to keep oxygen rolling through my brain so that I can witness the last few seconds. Ugh, I don't like this talk anymore. Neither do I. I'm not <laughs> playing tomorrow. So. Well, you know what? I mean, I like when I'm Let's when I get nervous. When I get nervous flying, I always think about the so many people fly. Every day, yes. so many people yeah. get up in the air and cut and land. And not only, but planes, okay. thousands of planes take off and land safely every day Full in the world. Full of billions Full of people. Of people. <laughs> Full of people, yeah. yeah. And, it, and we get one of these stories a couple times a year. So it yeah. really is. You are apparently something like uh, more likely to win the lottery seven. No, oh, you're, more, right. you're more likely to be hit by lightning seven times. Yeah. Um, no, that's the lottery one. You're more likely to be hit seven times by lightning than win a big, a major lottery. But there's another one out there that's like well, that about plane times, crash. Yeah, so. I think something about you're more likely to die on the way to the airport in a car. Oh yeah, in a car. But and this is my my kids were. Yeah, that doesn't fun. help you when you're stoned yeah. on a plane. Ha <laughs> 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 ha ha! I got like, so freaked out one time that I passed out on an airplane. Really? Yeah, well, because I was really, I was, like, I was messed up though. Yeah. Like I had been doing doing some drinking stuff in, in and Vegas and some stuffing on the way back, and there was a there was a, a very large black woman sitting next to me, mm-hmm. 
And, and you're racist and this bothered you. Oh, dude. I was like, give me another <laughs> goddamn seat. <laughs> I should have the aisle. She should be the one to die first simply because of her race. Uh, uh, Stuart, a uh, big white guy trumps <laughs> big black woman anytime. No, Could you was, have her move, please? She was awesome because uh, I fell asleep. Oh, like, did I she help out. you out? Did she? No, no, no. I passed out. and uh, On her bosom. Basically, I yeah. fell. Asleep. I I don't remember falling asleep. I just remember like I was starting to have a panic attack because I was really messed up, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna have a heart attack! Mm-hmm. This plane's going down!" And I just I just honked <laughs> out. I was like, ah, "I'm gonna reaction. die!" <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up laying on her shoulder. Mm. I was like, Aww. and I woke up, and I like I woke up, and my eyes just kind of got hers, and she saw me, and I I just lifted my head. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." And then she goes, oh, it's okay, baby. Mm-hmm. I don't mind. I was like, ah. <laughs> I went right back grandma. to sleep. I'll go a little more. And I went right back to sleep. <laughs> she was awesome, yeah. yeah I, I, you um, just lay your her little head right here on my bosom. <laughs> she <laughs> wasn't retarded. She I was just saying. You lay your head right here on my bed. I've never let it stop me. My kids were making fun of me last night because I was talking about this because I have to fly and this stuff going on. And they're just going after me about how that, that stat that she threw in there, that you're much more likely to die on the way to the airport. You're much, but here's my thing is, when I'm in a car, I'm usually driving, and if I mess up or I don't defensively drive well enough or I miss something, and that's on me. But I don't know the guy. I don't know the pilot. I don't know or if his ex. Woman. I don't know if his ex-wife is a bitch who's about to take all of his money. I don't. I don't know what his Jesus. mental state is. I have no idea. I'm just cattle at that point, and that's what I don't like about it. And I think about the weirdest things. But one thing that gets me through turbulence. This does help me. I don't know if anybody else does. If the turbulence gets too bad, I just close my eyes and I pretend I'm in a pickup truck on an old country road. Yeah. And it's bad. It's just like when you're on a boat. I just have to remove that thirty thousand feet between me and that country road. It's just like being on a boat. Also, yeah. like yeah. when it's bouncy like that. It's the yeah. pockets of air underneath the water. But I, mean, I that's just exactly think, well, what this is about its three thousandth flight. Who knows? Scary. This is the time the wings get knocked off. <laughs> when I was when I was a kid. <laughs> My dad took me out in a boat with like a bunch of his, his buddies, and I uh, I cried hysterically the entire time. And I was like a kind of cool, calm, collected kid for like I, I would be down for whatever. Yeah. And I was I lost my shit, and I still remember to this day. I the sound of the water. I thought that the boat was like on like a wood plank, and if we got off of it, we and every time they turn, I'm like, we're gonna die. Well, You're going off the wood. You're getting off the wood. You're getting off the the, the ocean road. Idea? I don't know. It, it's just the sound of it. It sounded like yeah. the bottom of the boat was on something. Yeah. And if we turned. We were going to fall off it, and then the boat was going down. I was sure. like, yeah, get me out of here. That makes sense to me. Yeah, and still to this I day, would, I can't I, go to the boat. I think that <laughs> we should have a different system. Not a different system, but I'd like to see some sort of catapult kind of thing shot out of a cannon. Oh, right, you want to go from you want to go from New York to L.A.? <laughs> You'd be the last person to get into that thing. <laughs> yeah. You would not crawl into that. But, but here's the upside. I say, Eric, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of it's daunting, but you're in L.A. in five minutes. I mean, you can't beat that, right? Just get shot out of a cannon on one side, and then there's a huge trampoline waiting in Los Angeles. <laughs> Maybe just a big vat of marshmallows. Just land in marshmallows. <laughs> did somebody just make that? I did. Oh, you made it. Okay. <laughs> Mike, Mike made a, a, a bumper sticker that says, put it on, fuck the ocean. I'll put it, I'm going to post it on the Facebook page Yeah, we'll right post now. it on the Facebook. <laughs> Shouldn't a bumper sticker have the asterisk thing rather than F-U-C-K? No, it should say fuck because that's what you mean. I know that, but I mean, <laughs> people think I have We're a foul mouth. I don't mind cars. the fact that they, that they think I want to pollute the ocean. You oceans, would have posted or I not. Do. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 we should all book a ticket maybe on uh, Malaysian Airlines. I bet they're cheap as hell right now. Well, their stock is plummeting. Nah, that's not good use of words. Their uh, their stock is going uh, down. Their stock isn't going up. Put I'm just saying. Nah, you I can't know? put it right. I can't put it any way that's not... I'm sure it's safe to fly. Them. We all gonna ride together. We all gonna fly together. There's that the thing. We all get on the same flight. Yeah, we're gonna do sure. that. This, we've been planning on doing a it's live a show. Team for bonding Malaysia. experience. Let's risk our lives on a shitty airline. Yeah, we'll learn to trust each other. Then we'll go do one of those stupid corporate well, they, camps where we yeah. close our eyes and fall into one another's arms. <laughs> trust Jesus. falls. That's the labeling they get now in my mind. Because I don't ever deal with Malaysia Airlines. Shitty airline. Just because this plane's gone. Right, I know. Forever. It turns out they have shitty airline. It turns out they have a. St- Stellar reputation. They have very few accidents. I'm there. sure they do. I'm are you sure on your they cell do. phone? Dude, that's the why, why are you going in they're and out? Done. It's a Skype. Oh. All right. So uh, give me another. Uh, give me another deal. Yeah, you wanted to talk about this uh, all night talkathon on climate change. Oh uh, yeah, the Democrats talked all night about climate change. Yeah, they took. Uh, uh, Climate's changing. Why does the climate not changed? Can somebody tell me? Climate change is real. <laughs> it is caused by humans, and it's hey, solvable. Said Senator Brian Schatz. Hold on one second. Do you realize that just about a month ago, this our ground was frozen over 
My pool was frozen. There was snow everywhere. And yesterday, beautiful That's blue weather, skies. Eric. That's climate, climate change. Climate change. It's weather change. Okay, what's the difference, Greg? Climate is long scale, long term, big scale. Okay. Weather's just daily patterns. Okay, so 3.5 billion years ago, it was nothing but molten lava rock. You couldn't live anywhere. And it's That's changed not climate. To this. That was formation of the earth. That's the climate <laughs> ice at the age. time. Go with the ice age. The ice age will work for this argument. I'm, I'm trying to lead you to it. All ice right, age. Make Use my it. argument for me then. Oh, that's lazy. No, it's your, <laughs> your argument. I'm just giving you the ice well, age. Well, he seems to age. want to make the argument. Let him make the argument. Why should I do the heavy lifting? He's just throwing things at me. Yeah, the ice age and then the ice age. Because you're the one who's going to rail against it. So I'm just trying to. Well, help I just you don't. Here. I think that the whole, the, they used to say the global. Why'd they change it? It was global warming, and now it's climate change. It's the same people. It's the same corporation. It's the same entity. They just changed the sign on the front that used to say global warming, and now the sign says these are now the offices of climate change. But all because the it's actors not just are the warming. same. Yes, yeah. I know that it's not just warming, but is there argument that the climate should not change? Because I think the climate has always changed. That's correct. I also think in the history yeah, of the Earth, it we has have always about changed, the, and that's right. Don't we have about the best climate ever in the history of the Earth right now? That more people can live and breathe, and you know, there's only a thin part. It only of takes the, a few degrees to throw it off, though. That's, that's true, a, a but there's only there's only everything. there's only a thin part of the Earth where people can live anyway. In, in terms of, if you go up seven thousand feet, you can't breathe anymore. You can't live underwater without some building some kind of thing. There's only certain area of the you can't live in the desert. You can't live, you know, in a big in a big desert. You know, so there's only this one part where you can actually live and, and breathe anyway. And I think that that, that habitable zone is bigger now than it's ever been in I mean I, I just don't know what it is some senator from I mean this is uh, the the uh, the majority leader in the Senate Harry Reid how does he know this? is he a scientist the Midwest has experienced the most punishing drought since the Great Depression wildfires have ravaged the West places burned mr. president that have never burned before and the mining Mississippi nearly ran dry Where's the science there? Well, He's rattling off facts. Yeah. Did the Mississippi giving... almost run dry, really? Yeah. That happened? <laughs> yes. There, there are things about the wildfires I do know that uh, the fact that we put them out so often when there's a huge mm -hmm. fire, it actually makes more green for there to be a yeah. fire later. So we right. are kind of... We don't do as many we don't do as many controlled fire burns as we used to. Or just letting them burn. I mean, it yeah. is natural for a fire to right. uh, for a, a, a forest or something to catch on fire every once yeah. in a while. Not from just like a cigarette. No, it but, is. But yeah, I mean, it's it is well, natural for there, it to burn. It's part of the environment. Wasn't there a, a controlled fire in Yellowstone like a while, like decades ago? And they're like, yeah, let it burn. That's just the way this plays out. But then it got out of control and destroyed so much of the parkland right. that I think everyone's overly cautious now. Right. It's nature nature doesn't know that we want to have great uh, views right. in, in our homes. And nature's like, oh, it's time to burn this. Most, most fires, forest oh, fires. I want it to be pretty. Started by lightning. You know, so, oh, right. this is causing more lightning. You ever seen a map of the earth of lightning? It's happening all the time, everywhere. It's not happening more now. Uh, what about uh, six feet of water in the streets of Evangeline, Louisiana? Randy Newman has a song. <laughs> oh, Let's yeah. just deal with me and not wonder whether or not that song was ever made. <laughs> Randy Newman, I love when she looks at me like, are you making up a thing that never was sound before? Like it. <laughs> I hate having that What about knowledge. people that live on Jupiter, man? It's, it's, always, it's always like fires and stuff there, man. They don't complain. But my I watch Cosmos. Yes, <laughs> There's that big storm. But my point is, is this. The red there hurricane, dog. There was a flood dog. in Louisiana in the late 20s or early 30s that were so, it was so big and so devastating that they wrote great songs about it. You know, and and... But now we're supposed to believe that the hurricanes are worse. The hurricanes aren't worse. Some, it's the same as it always was. Some years you have a lot of hurricanes. Some years you don't have hardly any hurricanes. And man and scientists even don't have no idea. There's no scientist in the world that could create a hurricane tomorrow. We don't even barely understand this stuff. And you got people like uh, this senator from New York saying, well, there's no doubt about Climate it. Climate change is real. It is here. Rising sea levels, disappearing coastlines, longer droughts, colder winters, hotter summers, massive so-called storms of the century are occurring routinely. Again, she said the same thing he did, Harry Reid. No connection to the science of how one creates the other. He's like, hey, would you look around? Okay, well, the science, science is obvious. Yeah, it's happened before, like in the Ice Age when that melted, and that didn't do anything. It didn't kill mostly an entire uh, 
Eon of species. It's fine. Very snarky, but we weren't here, <laughs> were we? No, but the, the, the we those who here. those who were no. died. But you know what? But, but there was no industry. There were no smokestacks. How did that happen? How does such a catastrophic thing happen on the planet without capitalist making the air dirty? I don't even understand it's, that. It's hard because they're politicians, so they're not going to say they're just posturing. Yeah, they're just posturing, right? They, like they're you said, they're not. All, well, no, they're talking to their base. They know nobody's exactly. going. to They're just trying to get people riled up in the, on the left to go out and vote. But but I, can, uh, I assume, and I, I don't know a lot about climate change, uh, climate change because I'm not a scientist and I don't know the facts, but it does seem reasonable that um, the earth is changing naturally just because climate does change over time. The but it probably is not helping that we do have a lot of pollution and I, I don't I don't I think we have less pollution in this country than we did oh, yeah, 15 years ago or 30 it's not years about ago the United so States. we're supposed to change everything we do and China doesn't it. care now exactly China, China, China damn. yeah all of those Malaysia right. is like blowing up their airplanes so we could do <laughs> we could do everything right and China and the emerging countries don't do anything exactly and you have absolutely no effect on it plus I want to know what do exploding volcanoes and stuff like that the stuff they put into the air how many how many sure. cans of air of hairspray do I have to buy to match you know one volcano belching into the in, into the atmosphere that's actually when the, the 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 big explosion that killed the dinosaurs it wasn't just the meteor that killed no, it's them. what happened afterward the it environment was, well, killed all the vegetation they right but dead. it wasn't just that it was that there were a large amount of volcanoes that were active at the time and that disruption caused a chain reaction mm -hmm. so that all those uh, right so boom, boom, all, boom. yeah and so it, it it messed it up globally you know because yeah. one hit on the, on well, the, the planet the is ash bad, gets into but, the atmosphere and it blocks out the sun at some point and it cools the earth but that was also there's, caused there's not so just much... by the meteor, but also by the volcanoes and well, all that stuff. Well, that's just throwing yeah, more and yeah. more up there. More and One, more. You know, so I... Going back to Yellowstone for a second, I don't know why it's come up twice now, but that's a giant super volcano. And like yeah. each year it yeah. rises an inch or two, which is quite a bit for land to rise that much. And if Yellow... it explodes yeah. again, yeah. which, which it will no, do it's not an if. It's not an point, if. It will be so much. When? Yeah, it will. It will explode it's going again. To. There's going to be so much ash in there. It's going to block out the sun for quite a while, so we're screwed. Yeah, I heard that there'll be like two inches of ash mm -hmm. in Kansas or something after that blows. It's a recessed volcano, which is the most dangerous type of volcano. Were you in California when, uh, what's the big one up in Washington, North Mount St. Helen? No, no, I was, I was, but when that went, I was, that was in the 80s. But that had national effects uh, in the yeah, fallout a little of that, bit, right? A little bit, a little bit, hmm. but... um. Not something we couldn't get. Look at this. Uh, um, this guy, I love this guy. This guy's Senator Pat Leahy. You ever hear this guy talk? Always sounds drunk. I don't know if he's drunk <laughs> at the time, but he sounds. Here's a guy who's had a couple drinks in his lifetime. We see in California scorched farmland, and Alaska's retreating glaciers. Wow. And Wyoming's burnt Burn. forests and superstorm ravaged coastlines. He kind of sounds like Burn. a Native American. <laughs> Kind of sounds like Rob Ford on a, a Wednesday <laughs> night around two thirty in the morning as he's trying to stand in line at Sonic's. Yes. We'd be able to give you his lunchy. <laughs> what Fuck if we're you. jerks and he had like a stroke or something? <laughs> no, no, I've been following this guy okay. forever. He's been at least one of these guys who's been in the Senate for a hundred years. Yeah, <laughs> but and it's always sure. sounded drunk. We see in California sure. scorched farmland, and Alaska's retreating glaciers. I keep. And Wyoming's burnt forests and super storm ravaged coastlines. He's such an old alco alcoholic, he refers to the bartender as barkeep. Barkeep? Bar <laughs> Sounds like Mayor Man uh, Menino in, uh, in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard that guy? <laughs> oh, no, that guy. That's, that guy. Was he always in a wheelchair? Or, or did he just ended up? He was in a wheelchair during the whole Boston bombing thing. He'd show up. And uh, one Republican had a point of view. I would say this. He knows what he's talking about Al Gore. I would say this. He knows what he's doing in that the New York Times speculated that Al Gore is very likely the first uh, environmental billionaire in existence. So I guess he knows what he is doing there. See, you buy a whole bunch of stocks that uh, make money off of the, the climate change scare. And you get in early, and then you go out and scare more people right. so that the, those stupid products are bought by others, and you make money. Let's just, you know, cool for Al Gore. He's a capitalist, but uh, <clears throat> let's understand all of this. It was all explained by Danny DeVito in one episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Just check it out. What episode? The one about the guns. Yeah? It was in last season. Mm -hmm. uh, it's getting hot or something like that. It's called gun something. What, is he, what, what does he say? 
Well, he, <laughs> don't he, don't have him quote shows. That's always the worst. Quote shows. Yeah, it's worse. He, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. Just go find it. Oh, okay. It's great. It's one of the. It's a, a great episode. But they're all great episodes. Uh, you you conjure up. Uh, no, we gonna talk about Snowden here. Sure. Okay, because this is South by Southwest, which I'm going yeah. to. Yeah, you're going to South by Southwest. Edward Snowden appeared. Yeah. Uh, from yeah. Russia. From Russia. To tell a man. To tell people how bad america is with spying on people and rights and human rights right, and all said, of this stuff and he's he's in russia who has just invaded crimea and i mean did you see any of this so he appeared on screen at south by southwest mm -hmm. and the people in the crowd i mean i love south by southwest i love austin but these people are just such idiots i mean <laughs> I, I, I this there was a q a there was not one hardball question to this guy it was, how does it feel to be such a wonderful hero? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not a hero. Those men wear uniforms. Shut up. He claims. You know you feel like you are. <laughs> yeah, he does. He claims that the NSA is actually doing a worse job on terrorism because they're so focused on the Internet. We've actually had tremendous intelligence failures because we're monitoring the Internet. We're monitoring, you know, uh, everybody's communications instead of suspects' communications. Okay, well, why didn't you run for office saying that to people and that you wanted to change things? I'm supposed to believe this douche over in Russia over all of the intelligence gathering community. This Edward Snowden is so smart that he, if you could just put the intelligence in his hands, he would do it properly, he'd protect all of your privacy, and he would end terrorism as we know it. This is what this douchebag is basically saying. I can do it better than they can. Except there's no responsibility. And he's in Russia. Not one person in Austin says, well, don't you feel a little weird going after the United States of America and saying that we're going against our Constitution uh, when you're, com you're coming to us from Moscow? You're coming to us from Russia? Vladimir Putin is, is basically your landlord? He's the guy that's allowing you? By the way, here's the thing with the Snowden stuff that a lot of people don't realize. Only a small part of what he revealed talks about uh, the surveillance. Only a small part of what he revealed talks about what they're doing on the internet and how they're following us. A great majority of what he's releasing in there are bona fide, genuine state secrets. Mm -hmm. And do you think Russia's not getting those from him? I mean, how much does this guy have to do before people legitimately say, look, he's, he, he's rooting against the United States of America. Maybe he does care about privacy, but what's being released is... You know, the names of agents in certain areas that we have and things like that. Those, those are genuine state secrets and would have gotten you the death penalty through 99.9% .9 of this country's history. If we even bring him back, there's no one even talking about that, you know? Yeah, he's, I mean, he, he just feels justified for what he's doing. He is a attention whore, really. He's a narcissist. He's a narcissist. I mean, anytime, you know, even, even if he's doing some good, I don't even want to argue that. Because he's a narcissist, I just want to ignore him. I will not pay any attention right. to him. Look up his girlfriend. She's uh, cute. She's cute, and she also, look at the type of people they were with their YouTube channels. They, they, they were all about, let's be in the spotlight. They're both, they're two attention whores. And that's what <laughs> really, you're right, Greg, get rid of the treason debate, get rid of all that kind of stuff. You, these people are following a douchebag narcissist. Uh, I mean, the, the dude appeared with a huge copy of a video of uh, the... Constitution, Constitution of the United States behind yeah. him. It's like, oh, you really, Edward Snowden? You could have stayed here and run for office right. without revealing the identities of any of our agents in uh, very dangerous areas of the globe. He would have been globe. snuffed out. Yeah, right. They wouldn't have let him talk. Right? Yeah. He has to go to somebody like Vladimir Putin who cares about uh, personal privacy and everybody's rights all the time. Vladimir Putin who poisons his enemies. And nobody in Austin asks that, asks that question. Yeah, why does That's he care about that? That's embarrassing. I'm going to Austin just to yell at people <laughs> at rock concerts. I'm going to yell at people about how stupid they Turn are. Turn that loud music down. <laughs> Turn that music down. I want to lecture you about what a douchebag Edward Snowden is. Yeah. Give me one more. Woo. Give uh, me something light. Yeah. I know. We've, we've been <laughs> While Disney announces that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cell phone addiction. A lot of parents, there's been some talk of uh, parents that are glued to their cell phones. Well, everybody, right? I mean. Well, especially parents that like when they go to restaurants and everyone at the table is at their cell phone, um, that people have more negative um, uh, interactions with their kids. Mm -hmm. So That's the point of this? Is it a survey? Is it a. 
Or it's a somebody... new study. <laughs> it's, it's a, a new study. study. So it turns out, so what does it do to your kids? Um, if I you're guess... a parent, so you're ignoring your kid, right? You're just like on your Facebook and you're, you know, yeah, taking I, a picture I, I of your know. sandwich. I don't even know if it's about ignoring, like they want something and you're ignoring them. Right. It's just that when you are on your cell phone more often than you're not, your interaction with your kid is going to be more negative than it is positive. Oh, so they're not just talking about less. They're not just talking about quantity. In time, they're saying you're having worse time. In the yes. times that you are talking with your kids. Exactly. And what is their evidence that this is going on? Parents oh, that have kind always, of makes sense to me, doesn't it, it? Well, but why do they say, like, you're, you're yelling at the kid because he's keeping you away from your Facebook page on, on your smartphone or something? When a parent who was, I'm going to read that from the <laughs> Leave article. me alone. This uh, is my Twitter time. <laughs> You've had yours. Uh... <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna make. I'm gonna. I'm gonna block you. I'm gonna block you if you don't stop it. I am it. unfriending you. You're, yeah. you're going. To, you're going to school. Be totally blocked. Daddy's trying to post about how much he loves the Rolling Stones. Please yeah. stand still. I need to hashtag you. Yeah, like I'm trying to get a picture of you for my Facebook page. <laughs> stand still. <laughs> hashtag no. kids suck. Stupid yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that. I mean, if you're if you're um, in your own world of your iPhone, right? Yeah. And then your kid needs a lot. Or of, Android. Or Android. I'm so sorry. Sorry, so Android. We have a lot of listeners. Or what other? Is, is it just iPhone and Android? Well, you got your Windows phone. That's a little different Flip operating phones system. for you old school. That's, uh, yeah, those aren't even smartphones. Those Bricks. are dumb phones. Dumb phones. <laughs> uh, yeah, like you, you're you're in your own world at this phone, and then your kid needs something, and you're annoyed because yeah. you have to come out of yourself, mm-hmm. you know? And we're all, we're all too much on our phones. You think that's going to happen to you with your kid? You're going to ignore this kid? Well, you should be now. on your phone while giving birth. That would be awesome. I'll live tweet it. Yeah, and as soon as the kid comes out, you I'm say, crowning. Oh. Hashtag ouch. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it makes sense. Just like when you're, I mean, it doesn't have to be right. about your phone. It could be just in your normal relationships. If I'm on my computer looking, look, you know, like really focused, and then you need something, I'm like, ugh, what? You know? Well, yeah, I, yeah, no, yeah, I get that. So I just uh, I think that these studies just sort of I think people acclimate they you know kids now have their smartphones everybody understands what's going on but you're I, either yeah. a good parent or a bad parent if you're not paying attention to your child you're not being there for your kid it doesn't matter why but maybe you're but maybe the fact that you're Addicted? not maybe the fact that you're not that great with your kid like you're saying maybe that's just happening anyway yeah maybe that's why you're on your phone because it's like well I don't give a shit I'm gonna ignore I'm gonna yeah. be on my these Twitter stupid kids. I gotta get, take I gotta get my, my money. Candy Crush level they going. Take up. my money. They disrespect me. They show me no love, no affection. No love. And so screw them. I'm so, just gonna, I'm gonna get my virtual friends. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have virtual children, and I'm gonna be really, really I'm give them all of my attention, all my virtual children, and my real children yeah. can suck it. Because let me tell you something, as you will find out when you have this child, I think you're probably gonna have another one. So you probably have two kids within a couple of years of each other, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you're going to learn something when they turn 12. Yeah. They just become jerks. <laughs> I mean, really, you just don't, you just like, you know, you go to a 12 year old with an idea that you had a year before that was awesome, and you get the rolling of the eyes. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, go to a basketball game, really. Yeah. Whereas a year before, hey, you want to go see the Hawks? Yeah, Dad, that would be great. I'll take you to a restaurant. We'll have a good meal, and we'll go see the Hawks in the playoff games. That's great. You come back, but maybe that's last through 12. Come back at 13. What? Uh, I don't know. I was pretty cool with my parents. I was pretty cool with my parents. All right. Well, got boys especially. Get the eye rolling. All right. And then you walk around at the Hawks game with a kid who, you know, frowns most of the time. Then they grow out of that. They go. They grow out of it. But there's a couple years there where your kids are just dicks. Yeah. (laughs) I I was really glad. um, Kids are the worst. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go after kids. So bad. I was really glad um, that. I mean. You know, I thought we were having a boy for a long time, yeah. and then we found out it was a girl, and then I thought, oh, I'm kind of glad, because there's that weird teenage, sullen boy yeah. time mm-hmm. where, like, they're in the bathroom for too long, and you're like, oh, I know what you're doing, crusty yeah. socks, like, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> like, I was going to well, have to deal with that. Well, that's both because, they're, they're, because yeah. they're whacking off and do it, and they're not washing them. They're yeah. just I know, wearing that's them what I'm over saying. and over again. Yeah. Yes. They're wearing their, 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 their... You go through that period. Oh, you're not wearing your jizz I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. On yeah. many sure. occasions. No. Sure. Every you didn't have Every man's you had to throw a jizz sock on once or twice. I don't know. the underwear inside out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's necessarily intentional, but you just you go into your pile of socks. It dries up. It's not like you feel moisture in there. I know, but it's gross. That well, smells clean. Got that little chlorine. You smell it, right? That's like it right. smells yeah. like a swimming pool. That's right. It's sterile smelling. And Greg's strangely silent through this. 
I can't, well, I can't speak because uh, oh, okay. he's on the line. I got you. I got you. And so it's uh, not strange. A lot of car on. noises. A lot of Uber noises. So the, the, the pot needs to be turned down. I got you. <laughs> we got to figure out some way to put people on different pots. Uh, so is that it? Is that what we got? Yeah, pretty much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was our news. If you want to find... Oh, well, I have not been updating the links. Yeah, let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> Apologies to... What about the 57 people who give us a little bit of their money? How come they didn't tell me? Uh, apparently <laughs> nobody cares. I put uh, it on them. Really, it kind of shows us that nobody cares oh, yeah. about our Reddit site because it got no... You know, if we don't have a video up within five minutes, everybody, hey, there's no video, there's no whatever. Yeah. The Reddit site has been... You haven't updated it in how long? <sighs> Maybe like four, three, three days, two, two tops. And how many people have complained? <laughs> Zero. I think it kind of lets us know. Yeah. We'll give it another few weeks and see if people start liking the Reddit deal. But yeah. it, otherwise. Well, maybe we're not making it clear. I mean, yeah. I am talking. Well, we got so many things going on. It's hard to make everything clear. Well, listen to us here and watch us there. Click go to the RSS. Go to the Amazon thing. If you go there, turn off your ad blocker. Blah, 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 blah. Give me money. Blah, 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 blah. So Eric <laughs> sends me a billion news stories every day. And uh, we don't get to them all. Right. So if you want to see some of those stories we didn't get to, you can find us on ericvonradio.com. There's a link. And it's called News Links. And you can click on it and you can see the other stuff that we didn't get to. Should we maybe change News Links to Reddit? No, because then people just think it's the generalized yeah, Reddit. Like, right? I don't, yeah. oh, go to Reddit. Reddit we like Reddit. Reddit. Yeah. We yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> Here's uh, E Bombs World, too. Go to E Bombs yeah, World. We like that. It's funny yeah. videos of people College falling humor. down and hitting their head. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, that's that. Well, thank you, Autumn Fisher. And that's that. Da-da, da-da. Da-da. Uh, it's time for some Cellini. <laughs> With your wine. Nick Cellini, how are you, buddy? Mr. Von Hessler, how are you, my friend? I am doing well. What the hell is going on in sports that we should know about? Well, let's start with the world of baseball. It's for the first time since he walked away. He didn't really retire, but his contract expired with the Giants back in 07, and then nobody resigned him for the first time. Since then, Barry Bonds, a much smaller Barry Bonds, mm. returned in a San Francisco Giants uniform. He was a guest instructor for the day. Get this, everybody. He says he's much smaller now because he embraced the sport of cycling. Oh. Not because he did a performance-enhancing drugs. Not, not because he stopped doing PEDs. Is his head shrinking back to normal size? Because when he was on the PEDs, I mean, that head blew up. Yeah, his head looks a little bit smaller. I think, though, once your cranium expands, it doesn't necessarily oh. go back to its original size. His body, though, he had to actually go back and get a smaller pair of pants. I think they gave him his old pants <laughs> that he used to wear, or at least the same size pants that he used to wear. And, yes. Well, they no longer fit him for a reason, because he's out riding bicycles, you yeah. see. Well, I saw the, the press ask him. I got a little bit of audio here. The press asked him uh, if he thought he had been blackballed. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what blackballed really means. Well, you that's okay. I'm doing pretty good. I'm fine. This dude, Barry Bonds, is the strangest story in baseball to me because when I was a kid, and when did Hank Aaron break Babe Ruth? Was it 74 that he broke? Yeah, 74. Okay, so I remember, and I was living not in Atlanta. I was living in Memphis at the time, and I remember what a big deal it was when he broke Hank Aaron's record. And when Barry Bonds, I mean, when he broke, when Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's record, when Barry Bonds broke Hank Aaron's record, there was like nothing, and then he was out of the sport because everyone knew the dude was juicing. Mm-hmm. And so what does baseball do with this stat now? I mean, who is the home run king? Is it Barry Bonds, or is it still Hank Aaron? Well, I, I think by the record, if you look into baseball's record books, it is Barry Bonds with 762 home runs. But the grassroots campaign, those people that are loyal to baseball, the baseball purists will tell you that, yes, indeed, it still is. Hank Aaron would all is said and done. And people were trying to get the confession from Barry Bonds. Don't forget when Mark McGuire got back into baseball as the hitting coach of the Los Angeles Dodgers, he finally admitted, right. to no one's real surprise, that he used PEDs. Well, Barry Bonds still isn't willing to go down that road. Right, because if he admits it, they, it might become official that, that they take that away from him, right? That they would, or at least put an asterisk mm-hmm. next to him, next I to that a, stat. Yeah, I I think it's a pride thing with him. He's no longer willing to admit. He says he definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He says, I'm not going to admit anything. What I answered in court, I'll stand on that. And really, he said nothing in court. He was convicted of obstruction of justice, and uh, he, I guess, served some time, or at least 
got some house arrest time and was on probation and everything else. So technically, he's a convicted felon, but yeah, he, got, he won't he got, admit it to the press. He got in trouble for lying to authorities. He didn't get in trouble for the act itself. So exactly. that's, it was obvious that he was lying, but that doesn't mean that he did it, but he obviously did it. Wasn't he basically on his way to the Hall of Fame before he started doing PEDs? I mean, he was a good player. To, he's, it's not like it turned him into a good player. It just made him, I think, he had the ability to heal quicker, which allowed him to right. hit more home runs consecutively. Well, he got big, and his body changed, and you're right. He hit a lot more home runs. But if you look at his numbers prior to the steroid use, yes, he, he was a Hall of Famer. And they say those around the game, the reason he started using PEDs, he was jealous of Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire was on the verge of being out of baseball. He started using, got a lot bigger and stronger. Right. Next thing you knew, he hit 70 home runs that one season, and everybody was paying attention to Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, that home run chase that year when Sosa hit 66. So Bonds got jealous and said, I'll yeah. show them all how good I can really be. And Well, he hit 73 home runs in a season. Well, it turns out that Sosa and McGuire both were juicing, right, during that whole thing. Yes, so. absolutely. And Sammy Sosa is another guy who really hasn't admitted as to whether or not he was using, but the eye doesn't lie. The eye test, it, it, again, you look at their bodies before and after, definitely uh, something wasn't on the up and up. It was more than just as Hulk Hogan would say, ironically, uh, training, uh, saying your prayers and eating your vitamins. So Phil Jackson, he's looking to get back into basketball. It looks like maybe he'll be the next president of the New York Knicks. Now, don't forget, he's got 11 titles as yeah. a coach. He won two titles as a player with the Knicks, and everybody would love for Phil Jackson to come back home. The question is, will he have the same success as a team president that he had as a head coach? Don't forget, he needed total autonomy in Chicago and with the Lakers to win. James Dolan is the owner of the New York Knicks. His father, Charles Dolan, was a cablevision magnet, and he essentially got all the money that he has from his father. So he's a guy that right. was, was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and he can't help but meddle. And I, I don't know if, if Phil Jackson and James Dolan are going to get along. How old is Phil Jackson now? You know, it's, Phil got... Jackson, he's in his late 60s. Okay, so he, he's... he is no spring chicken. That's he... why he doesn't want to coach any longer. He can't take the travel. Don't forget his last couple of years when he was coaching, he was, it looked like he was sitting on a throne and or a toilet on the bench. He was up elevated higher than everybody else. He had Two hip replacement surgeries. He's got bad knees. He's got a bad back. He really so that takes him out of that. The next he he's in bad shape. They so that takes him out of the running for for being a coach. Because I I mean, how long will it take if they get off to a bad season and the coaching is bad to say, hey, let's bring the guy with eleven rings down and get him on the floor? So given he, it looks like that's just not going to happen. He's just not healthy enough to fly everywhere all over the world. Yeah, I just don't think physically he can do that. Now, it might be one of those weird situations, and this happened toward the end of his Lakers career. There would be certain road games he wouldn't attend mm -hmm. and have his assistant coaches kind of handle things. Maybe that would be the best-case scenario if anybody wants him to coach the Knicks. And, so, on, and on the other we'll hand, what with that he, story. as Michael always likes to say, tying a bow on it, he's had an unbelievable career. Why not go back and end in some capacity with the team that you started with? Yeah, but you know what they say sometimes. Be careful what you wish for yeah. when it comes to going back home. It doesn't always work the way you wanted it to work out. Now, speaking of uh, the NBA, I don't know if you guys know who, and a lot of people do now know who this man is. He's a state representative out of Minnesota, oh. Pat Garofalo. He put out a tweet the other day. I guess he's known for putting out controversial tweets. And here's the tweet from the rep from Minnesota. Let's be honest. 70% of teams in the NBA could fold tomorrow, and nobody would notice a difference with the possible exception of increase in street crime. Well, needless to say, he was called a racist by a lot of people, and it was retweeted a number of times, and yeah. now his name is making headlines for all the wrong reasons. I, I love when the, these guys <laughs> delete their tweets, too. So, do, yeah. do you understand how this works? You, you, you better delete it in the first quarter second, uh, or else it's, once it's out there, it's out there. Um, I have some audio from this guy, and he's sort of saying, okay, it, it's a weird thing with this guy. Either he's, on the one hand, he may be so colorblind that he doesn't realize that saying something like that would be racist. Or, as a guy who's a politician, why would he tweet something that he knew would be taken as racist? So, there he is. I did not intend for it to be. I'll tell you that I got some very thoughtful emails from some people who talked about what it means for their children, who are sometimes uh, subject to additional scorn because of the color of their, their um, skin, that people stereotype them. And that was clearly not my intent. Uh, the, uh, one more because he gets to one where he gets to the word black and he just sort of kind of stumbles. <laughs> I made that mistake of categorizing 
all NBA players into one category. Obviously, there are many role models and examples that we are proud of in our community and across the country. And today, I want to apologize for my comments. Did I miss it in that first? I time? did not intend for it to be. I'll tell you. That. I thought I must have heard it like in, in the prep hmm. or something. But at one point, he goes, and the people that are black. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, trying to say b basketball players, <laughs> but he said black, which is the same thing. Look, let's be honest. Yes. Ninety percent of the NBA is black. And that's not a racist thing. It's a fact. Right. Like, I don't understand what... Well, but in his tweet, he said, the only thing that you would notice if the NBA folded, for the most part, is a rise in crime. So, therefore, it's <sighs> racist in the sense I that you're saying they're black, so if they don't have that job, they'll be stealing. I think we all knew that it meant that if, some, if a city lost a team, they're going to get pissed off. Yes. That's what that means. No, he said no. What he meant he was... He meant... He actually said, no, 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 oh, no, I no, meant no. it because they're black people no, black no, no, people no, no, steal. No, no, I'm saying this. He didn't mean... What he was saying was nobody would care if they lost their b basketball team. He was saying is there would be no – nobody would notice if the NBA went away except that there would be a rise in crime. Oh, yeah, he's a fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he meant. <laughs> yeah, he meant it. So, but, I mean, he's like a – he's known – I think he's a – I don't know if he's a Tea Party guy, right-wing guy. He's known for being uh, – having tweets that push the envelope a little bit. Um, but like I say, it's a weird thing where maybe he's so colorblind he didn't realize a tweet like that would hurt him. Because he says it wasn't a staff member. He says he wrote it, um, and he's known for writing these things. So, And it, it is yeah. weird that he wouldn't just take ownership of it if he's saying, like, yeah, I wrote it. Yeah. He should just be like. Well, but the way he's doing it is saying, well, I thought one thing, but since then people have gotten in touch with me and told me that they've been hurt by what, it. What do you think and his because real, of that. What, you know, what does he think his intention was? What I, think that, I think that he thinks that um, the NBA is made up. You want me to really parse it down? I think if you get into a mind like that, yeah. it probably is slightly racist, but yeah. not as racist. I don't think he thinks all black people are criminals. Of course. I think he thinks the inner city that populates yeah. much of the NBA creates a lot of... So they would go back to the inner city, but that still can be seen as racist, certainly. I mean, I don't know about racist. It can be seen as prejudiced. Put it that way. That's the problem, too, is that everything anybody says is racist yeah. instead of just prejudice. Yeah. But, you know, it, you got there's an element of race to that. He wasn't talking about the. He wasn't talking about Larry Bird no, going back to Indiana yeah, yeah, yeah. and robbing a liquor store. I'm saying he's prejudiced <laughs> against that race. Like he, that that word or what, what right. he said was prejudiced against that race. But to me, being racist is like no racist is different. Yeah, it's different. No, if you're racist, you 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 do not believe that other races are equal to you. Right, I mean, and I'm sure that's not what he too. thinks. Prejudiced is you have a sort of a stereotyped first response to somebody's skin color. And stereotypes like, doesn't necessarily are never mean you would deny true. them a vote. You know, a racist will always <laughs> deny the others a vote because right, they're not exactly. smart enough to vote. Yeah. A prejudiced person, a prejudiced person just has a stereotypical view of people, but they don't take it further than that. Yeah. It's like, well, we got to deal with their votes. You know, blah blah blah. You know. <laughs> Those idiots. Am I right? Have we worked this all out here, Nick Cellini? Yes, I, I'm learning and I'm listening and I'm doing uh, more than that. As I read another quote from the representative Garofalo from the state of Minnesota, he said, "What he meant was that the NBA is the only major pro league." that testing positive for marijuana is not a substance abuse violation. No intent beyond that. Well, I have no idea what that means. Well, it means that they'd, be all, they'd all be potheads. They and we all potheads. know that marijuana uh, starts you on the road of criminality. It's been a proven fact. So that's what he's Listen, talking about. I watch for Madness, and I know what goes on. You start smoking <laughs> yeah. that stuff, and it's a gateway drug. Oh, the first thing, it's gateway drug. I love that whole thing, the gateway drug. It's like, you know what? All right, I don't want to get into this whole thing. It's not, it has nothing to do with sports, but very quickly I will say, if you do heroin, yeah, you probably smoked pot. It doesn't mean one led to the other. Right. The, the fact that most people stop at pot or cocaine or something, but the idea that you would jump to heroin without starting at pot would be ridiculous. So the connection doesn't mean anything. Most people smoke pot and don't do heroin, and that's enough. I, Nick, I've, I've, run, I've run you through race. And uh, mm -hmm. and drugs. This is pretty good for you. Getting getting back on the radio, people are going to know. Well, he's shying away from the uh, more dangerous stuff. Nick's ready to be back yeah. on the radio. Then they'll hear something like this. Oh, you know what? He's still dabbling in the shock radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to he hurt your career. Loose cannon. Yes, I'm here to hurt your career, Nick Cellini. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I've done enough of that myself. Can't get any worse. Let's well, talk about uh, Chloe Johnson. Let's wrap up with this. Who is She's it? She's a transgendered athlete. She's trying to participate as a female. She was born a male, now a female, reassignment surgery in the CrossFit field of athletics. The story and the punchlines write themselves. Now, hold on. What is, and, what, what is CrossFit exactly? 
Which is where you try to squeeze into pumps as a man. (laughs) (laughs) Just can't can't fit in. (laughs) Stupid. (laughs) Such an asshole. Putting on a course and things like that. No, you you lift weights and then you run and then you do some pull-ups. You are training uh, every aspect of your body all at once. But anyway, she wants to train as a woman and the CrossFit people are saying you're not a woman technically. She's 5'4", 151 pounds, and she says there's nothing about me if you check me out that says I am still a man. I don't want to check her out. I'll take her word for it. Yeah, but you know what? If if they found her skeleton somewhere and you had to try to figure out who this person was and they brought in CSI, they would identify her as a man because they wouldn't wouldn't know what dress... That's a good point, though, but she also doesn't have as much circulating testosterone, so it's not like she would have the advantage of being... I think that the fact that she was a man, because she's going to compete against women, right? Right, but she's taking... I'm sure she's taking supplements. I know, but she still started as a man, and in in sports, when you have the best man and the best woman at a sport, the best man always wins because he has a physical strength that women don't have, Right. and so... so it's... I could see other women... Saying, look, you're bringing this guy in to compete against us? What, I mean, we have to see. You know, if he blows, he or she or whatever, blows everybody away, she, um, you know, then it would, it would be obvious that it's it's unfair. It's unfair to the others. They were never men. She right. may be diminishing in her manhood, but she was a man. Well, What's just, this broad's name? <laughs> <laughs> look, if she wants to be a woman, she's going to get talked to like one. What's her name? Chloe Jobson. Because if you think about, like, we were just talking about the, the uh, like, Jose Canseco, right? Like, that he stopped taking, if he stops No, Barry ta- Bonds, man. Oh, which I, I'm sorry, Barry yeah. Bonds. If he stops taking his PEDs. Yes. Yeah. Performance <laughs> um, enhancing drugs. I knew, I just, <laughs> I couldn't remember the cool acronym that you guys had. She was wondering why, was he a pedophile? Yeah, he's a pedophile? <laughs> uh, yeah, if he stopped taking those, then he would not be able right. to compete at the level where he is now. And so maybe it's the same way. I, I understand the oh, argument. He couldn't, he, he couldn't break Hank Aaron's record, but he could still be in the major league. I mean, before he went well, into... Well, just like... Before, I feel he like was, we just talked about earlier, yeah. he was already on a Hall of Fame path before he decided to start taking PEDs. Right. So but he she never... still starts out... The people that she's competing against were never men. If she's diminishing in her manhood, she still has, the, that, yeah. has that... She's got to have more man in her makeup genetically than they do. She went through puberty as a man, so she, you know, their bones developed yes. differently. Yeah. Right. 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 Structure, structurally, she's still a man. And yes. that's what the CrossFit people are saying, and she's suing them for $2.5 million. They're saying once a man, always a man. I think that they're right in this. I think it's. Un- I think they're protecting the others, and they're, they're, um, they're, you know, why should, I mean, okay, we're all open-minded, everybody do your own thing, but if I'm a CrossFit person and I'm a female and I've spent my entire life doing this to win these tournaments or whatever it is they do, um, I, want a fair, I want a fair ground and I don't want society to come in and say, hey, you know what, we changed our mind about a whole bunch of stuff and we're tossing this to you. Now, it's one thing to say, call me Betty, and everybody goes, you know what, we're going to call you Betty because that's what you want to be called sure. and that's, who, that's what you want to be and that's real cool with us. But at the point that you're actually physically competing with others, I think they're making the right call here. She still has a man's body that makes it unfair to the women. Yeah. Damn it. I agree wholeheartedly. Thank you. All right. Well, Nick Cellini, I appreciate uh, the fact that you are here to bring us up on on oh, why am I so bad at closing up segments? I need to go to I need to go to closing segment school. Nick Cellini. There you go. On sports. If people would like to follow you on the Twitters and whatnot, how do they do that? They can follow me at Cellini Nick. I've got some great stuff of a recent deposition that Justin Bieber underwent. He snapped a couple of times. Oh, yeah. And also, speaking of MMA, this is the greatest MMA fight in history as somebody submits because his opponent farted in his face. you got to yeah. see this on Twitter. Oh, oh, this is, a, <laughs> is this on YouTube or something? <laughs> it's on, you can check it out on Deadspin. You can also see it on my Twitter site, at Cellini Nick. Follow me on Facebook as well. Just Nick Cellini. Very good, man. C E L L I and I. I spell my last name. I really appreciate it. Have a good day, man. You too. Nick, Nick Chili with our sports. I had really before. Um, I'm going to stop myself this tomorrow. Justin Bieber was there, mm-hmm. and so then he, he he's at some producer's house, and then he he decides he wants to sing a song to his love, Selena Gomez. Uh-huh. Now, I, you know, to me, am I wrong or does this guy? He's like mixing. Is this? It, you tell me if this is a hit of his or something, but this does not sound good to me. But maybe I'm um, okay. 
I'm not I'm not hip on the Bieber. As a scaza point of view. Now we stepping out like oh god, cameras point and shoot. Touch me was my best shot. I stand back and point and shoot. You, you, the one that we argue with feel like I need a new one to be balling with, but the grass ain't always greener on the other side. Screw when you water it, so I know we got issues, baby. Chill, chill, chill. Would I rather work on this way you than to go out and start with someone new? As long as you love me, we could be starving, we could be homeless. Yeah, that guy could be homeless and broke, right? Could you be <laughs> further away from what that guy's singing about at this point? No, you wouldn't. She would not still love you if you were homeless and broke. But I don't know. Is that good or am I old? Or... It just sounds uh, like a 14-year-old wrote it for his girlfriend. Yeah, right. I mean, I listen to my. You hear Miley Cyrus' stuff and you go, well, I can see why that's a hit. Yeah. That's one of his songs. Oh, so this is a known yeah. song. Yeah, him and Big Sean. <laughs> well, I didn't think it sounded great. I mean, it kind of sounds like the rapping part kind of sounds like that new Kanye stuff. Yeah. And I don't like the new Kanye well, stuff. Oh, you don't like the Yeezus? No. Oh, my God. It's terrible. I don't know. I know people are into it, but I don't, I don't know. know. Kanye West, since everybody is, it's, you know, he's a genius. He's a genius. He's a genius. I've never listened to his music because the dude turns me off. Every, I've, I've never seen him smile. I've never seen joy. I've never seen happiness. You gotta watch got Keeping Up With The Kardashians. $9,000 billion <laughs> and walks around with a scowl on his face all day long, trying to find the one guy who refuses to call him a genius so he could yell at him. <laughs> He's got to be horde. <laughs> this is why you don't smile in pictures, you said, is because you got to be like tough or something. This no, is the I same just have a bad him. smile. I think I look stupid. But That's you in your mind. Me, but you see me laugh. You hear me laugh. You know that I enjoy myself. You know yeah. that. I mean, Kanye West walks around constantly in a bad mood, it seems like. And right. the guy's got talent. He's got fans. He's got money. What is he missing that he wants before he decides? He's got Kim Kardashian, who, you know, I, doesn't do a lot for me. But, I mean, most men in America want Kim Kardashian, apparently. I mean, what does he want? Yeah. What does he want? I've seen him smile happiness. on that Kardashian show. He wants to impress you, Eric. You're well, the last one. That is not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that is not going to Kanye West, by the way, who, so he was the guy who, during the New Orleans uh, Katrina stuff, he was the one who said George Bush <laughs> yes. doesn't care about black people. Now, what are the odds of this? So th- George Bush is the president. He goes on and says George Bush does not care about black people. Then the next president is the first black president. And Kanye West, uh, Kanye West does that thing at the Taylor Swift at the MTV Awards, where he ju- when he jumped up on yeah. stage, um, and so they asked Barack Obama about it, and he said, "Oh, that guy's just an ignorant fool." So you, the same guy who <laughs> said that this president doesn't like black people gets the first black president, and when asked about him, says that guy's an asshole. Right. <laughs> what are the odds? Yeah, he is terrible. <laughs> All right, Kanye West. Maybe he must. His music must be awesome because everybody I know thinks he's awesome. I think it's thinks just he's great, but rhyming. I've never heard it. I think he's his his rhymes are interesting. Yeah, and like the way he's put he puts the songs together. I don't something. like rap because but. not because of anything other than I can't if I listen to one song with a thousand words in it that I like. I go, oh, that's a really good song with a thousand words. <laughs> I don't want two more songs each with another thousand words. You know, it's like I get out of that mood really quick. You could play one rap song to me that has some interesting stuff in it, mm-hmm. and it's da 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 this and the thing to the thu and a blah. It always seems to be about how. I'm supposed to be upset as a white man that he has money or something. That's usually the message. <laughs> and, oh, y'all don't like me. Like, you know, all that kind of crap. But I can listen to one song and go, wow, that was really good. But I don't want to hear four more yeah. that have another thousand words per song. Yeah. Is it me? Is it yeah. me? Mm-hmm. Am I a racist? <laughs> <laughs> I like the old school I stuff. I like the Eminem. Am I a racist? I like the Eminem. I like... Uh, no, but you do sound old. <laughs> yeah. I like Dr. Dre and Snoop to get... Like, I like the chronic... I album. like uh, like eighties stuff a little bit. I like like little yeah, run, run run DMC and things like. But even again, hip hop is that hip hop? It's not really rap yeah, anymore. You're just sounding yeah. older, huh? You're just sounding older. I uh, like the eighties. Yeah, well, I like that beatbox stuff a little bit. Uh-huh. I mean, I thought there was a lot. If you go back to that, uh, what was the name of that Run DMC? It wasn't called Beatbox, something like that. Um, Rapper's Delight. No, Rapper's Delight was that Sugar was, Hill Gang. Oh, that's right. Uh, There's please the get, get, your, get your eighties rap I know. proper. What's wrong with hey, you? I know my Kanye. You do know your Kanye. Um, so what the hell was that? Who was the rapper I was talking about? You guys Run DMC. Up? Yeah, Run DMC. Um, there was a lot of humor on that album. Mm-hmm. The one that I, I that I heard in '86 or so had a lot of humor, a lot of funny stuff on it. Not about beating up hoes and bitches and stuff like See, that. I like, as the, I, recall. I like that stuff. You like the hoes, the hoes and the yeah. bitches and the yeah, bitches talk shit. Get dealt with <laughs> real quick. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have great. women who dream of being that bitch. 
I want to be the first one he slaps. I want to be his bottom bitch. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are women who get who feel jealous because he slapped you. Oh hell yeah! That makes you the number one bitch. Mm-hmm. I want to be the one he slaps first. That is pimping. <laughs> it ain't easy, but it's necessary. Ah, <laughs> uh, Republicans have a horrible reputation. Rappers have a great reputation. What is this world coming oh, to? Oh man. That I'll tell you what this now show is old. coming now to. Now we're old. This show. You're ending it on that note. That <laughs> note. No, I mean Republicans hate women, right? There's a war on women, but you know these rappers are geniuses. So they talk about beating the crap out of their three hoes. Three minutes ago, you should have just stopped the show three minutes ago. <laughs> well, I didn't, and that's the beauty of this show. We ramble from time to time, and this rambling show is coming into the station. <laughs> it's coming to an end. End of the line. All aboard. No, it's next stop. I screw up endings. So bad. I'm like Paul McCartney. He doesn't know how to end a song. Yeah. That's why he just starts it over Woo-hoo. again. You know, and then he like brings back the chorus again. I thought the song was over, Sir Paul. Because he's like me. He doesn't know how to end things. Well, this is coming to an end. Autumn Fisher. Yes. What if people... What if this is... They don't want it to come to an end. They want more Autumn Fisher. Oh, Where boy. do they find that? You can find me everywhere at Auto Pritz. P-R-I-T-T-S. Michael Albanese, who I have been told and have the paperwork here to support, is not... <laughs> the president and CEO of Show Business Incorporated. Where can people see, hear, or touch you? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm not <laughs> doing many shows this weekend. Uh, You're but not you doing any? See me. I'm doing like a couple spots. But I'm going out crazy. of town, man. This is the time to make the money. <laughs> you don't have responsibilities uh, here. Yeah, well, yeah, it's next week. I'm at the Aurora Theater in Lawrenceville, 21st, 22nd mm-hmm. uh, of March. You can go to inmyownhead.com, click on live shows, and get the links. I think we're all going to be out there. It's going to be a fun time. Good show. Maybe some Mexican food before and after. Not bad. I'm a fat piece of shit. Love the tacos. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm excited. You can all come out to see that. Greg Russ is going to be appearing in Atlanta sometime soon. Are you not? That That is true. I'll be back in town on Sunday. But also, I'm about to head outside. I'm going to leave my apartment and go to the bodega and get a seltzer. I oh, enjoy ooh. seltzer. One thing that's hard to find in the South. I'm going to miss it. You can go to the grocery store and find seltzer. But uh, not in convenience stores. They don't have it. It's very true. Perrier is the closest you can come. I'm but I like a that. seltzer fanatic. You I don't like the, seltzer. You gotta get the soda stream. How can you not like seltzer? I like uh, I like uh, sparkling water. The it's seltzer's the same got thing. no. It's not. The seltzer too many has bubbles. Too seltzer, big bubbles. Too many bubbles. It's more. There's more oxygen. Well, there's never too many bubbles. No, I don't like it. It's too dry. Sparkling water still tastes like feels like water. Sparkling water is is just it, the the oxygen just pops the bubbles too quick and it's too I dry. I go for the most bubbles possible. Schweppes, I've noticed. Has better bubbles than Canada Dry. Oh, so you're just a bubble guy. Yeah, and see, there's three kind of, of us middle. talking about this. Me, Michael, and Greg. Autumn still doubting the fact as to whether there's a difference between sparkling That's water exactly what I'm doing. and <laughs> seltzer water. <laughs> Can't you just give in? The men have let you know the truth. And I we have spoken, men. so therefore you should stop talking. Go make some sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs>